I believe, I believe, I believe I got another yes, Lord, down in my soul. Come on, give God a praise tonight. Come on, give him glory because he alone is worthy. So I will say yes to the Lord. My soul doesn't magnify him tonight. My soul rejoice in the Lord tonight. So we are excited tonight to give God another yes. Come on here, somebody. I'm telling you, yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, to your way. Yes, God, I'll go every step of the way. God, if you need somebody to send me, I'll go. So my soul, listen, I don't care about what nobody else feels tonight, but I'm telling you, I got another yes, Lord. I feel like running on to see what the end is going to be. So tonight we are here, hallelujah, on February the 6th. 2021. We thank God for this Tuesday evening, although it is very cold here in Alabama. We praise God for what God is doing tonight. Glory to God. God has a specific word tonight for his people. He has a specific word that he is trying to convey to you tonight. I want you to get a pen. Grab a pen. Grab a piece of paper. I want you to call a neighbor. Text a neighbor. Text a friend. Let them know that Apostle Dr. Silver Honor is on the line tonight. Let them know that I'm here tonight to give them some instructions. Glory to God. Hallelujah, because the Lord has them in mind. So listen, you take a second, and while you're taking your second to call somebody, while you're taking your, share this, share the number. Come on, share the number in your messenger. Share it on your phone in your messages. Send it to somebody so that they can hop on. Come on, so that they can listen in tonight. We have a word from the Lord. Glory to God. And so we want to thank everybody tonight. Those of you who are coming in or who are jumping on, we want to thank God tonight for Dr. Timmy Kim and the Elations family. We thank God for the Elations magazine, the Elations radio, the Elations everything. Amen. We just thank God tonight for them. <laughs> Excuse me. We bless the Lord because he is worthy to be praised. On yesterday, the Lord just had us in all in a prayer mode, and we are about to now go into prayer. A lot of people, uh, especially in the southeast, are experiencing some uh, rigid weather, and so uh, we are praying for them. You know, it uh, double well. We can we usually get uh, maybe twenty. 2020, uh, maybe the the most, the least that we'll get down to, but uh, we surpassed that on last night all day. You know, uh, it did go up to 25, but the temperature is dropping now. Uh, it's snowing in Birmingham, Upper Alabama. For me, it's snowing. Amen. And we just bless God for what he is doing. None of the um, ice is sticking here in that mobile, but we just thank God uh, for God being God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. We just magnify his name. So tonight, we want you to know, again, grab your paper, grab your pen, because tonight you need to walk with me in the word. You need to, to hear the Lord for your oneself. You need to know it's time to move forward. It is time to move on. You have been stuck too long. You've been in a situation that caused uh, you to have palpitations, to cause you to have panic attacks, to cause you to have anxiety attacks. You've been in a position too long, and you're not moving forward. You look like it's going 10 steps backwards. It is time for you to come on here, put, hey, get some fire up under your feet. Oh, my God, and move forward. It is time for you to get out of that situation that have drained you, that have caused you to wish that you weren't even in that position. But I'm trying to tell you tonight, God has a word, hallelujah, with your name on it, hallelujah. And I'm telling you tonight, it's going to better you if you follow these instructions. Amen. Tonight, good God from Zion. So let us go into prayer. Father, I thank you for these are people that have assembled themselves tonight or will come back by replay on the various sites. Oh, God, we thank you tonight for their lives. Father, we're praying tonight for Texas, oh, God. Lord God, restore power in the name of Jesus. Father, we're praying for all of the uh, southeast region. Lord God, we're praying for the north and the, uh, uh, the west, oh, God, and the east, oh, God, for those who have experiencing uh, bad weather, God. We're asking tonight, Lord God, that you have opened up different um, 
organizations uh, uh, that will be able to be a blessing to the homeless, oh God, the salvation armies, oh God, some of the churches are opening up so that nobody be outside in the cold. Father, I thank you now. Oh God, I speak tonight, oh God, that even uh, as the people are doing opening up their doors, Father, let the governmental system, Father God, pass a bill, pass laws, give money to fund these visions. There are plenty of organizations who are trying to get homes to be a blessing to house people until they can recover. Lord God, we ask in today that these businesses will come forth. These ministries will come forth. These operational, day-to-day operational uh, houses will come forth so that your people will not be outdoors, Lord God. Lord God, let us, um, we pray today that no child will be outdoors. Father, we thank you today for those leaders who have gone out, oh God, to make sure that people had blankets, and different things. Father, we just thank you for uh, putting a burden on the leader's hearts to do these things, to take care of those less fortunate. Father, you told us that the poor would be with us always. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we're not stingy, neither are we selfish, but we're about doing your business. And Father, we thank you for those who have helped out in these last couple of days. And Father, we thank you for those who are helping year round, oh God. Father God, I ask that you continue to strengthen us in our walk, continue to strengthen us in the work that you've called for us to do, Father, that we don't second guess it, that we just go ahead and be about it. Father, we thank you tonight for all that you're doing. We thank you tonight, oh God, hallelujah, Lord, Father, we ask that that no uh, one leaves on their space heaters to cause fires in their homes tonight, Father. We thank you that all houses will be heated, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your love, your compassion that you show us every day. And God, we just want to tell you, thank you, sir. Father, we love you, oh God. We bless your holy name, God. And we just thank you tonight for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. So we just bless the Lord tonight, uh, beautiful people of God. And I have uh, uh, one of a member of our, our ministry who lives in um, in Houston. Their power was out since yesterday or uh, maybe Monday. Yeah, their power was out since Monday. Uh, I've had, uh, and I have a lot of followers that are in Texas, and uh, one of them told me that she had to leave her house because they just didn't have any power, and it had gotten so cold in there. So I'm just thankful that people have somewhere to go. I thank you, God, that you are opening up homes for people to go in that don't have, you know, ordinarily have their own home right now at this time. See, what we have to remember, people of God, is this. Um, People that are homeless, they just had something. Listen, they could have had a bad, made a bad choice in a business decision. Y'all better hear me tonight. They could have made one bad decision in a business. In a, they made, made one bad choice in a business deci- decision. They could have, and it could, they were millionaires this morning, but by nightfall, they became broke. They lost it all. And then they're now homeless. I'm trying to tell you something. We are just one step over from being homeless. I know you say, well, we got our stuff together. We got everything in order. If we do get broke, we got this cushion. But let me tell you something. How about when you lose it all and that cushion is all that you got and you have to uh, uh, live so that that cushion don't run out? Come on. So uh, let's not be ugly. We need to take a step and look or uh, reflect and not only reflect, but we need to take a moment and put ourselves in their shoes. What if it was them? Uh, what if it was us who were in their shoes? How would we feel when people turned up their noses at us? How would we feel if people that are called themselves Christians would not even want to sow into them to help them, to feed them, to clothe their children, anything like that? You know what I'm saying? Put your shit, yourselves in their shoes. Amen. And so I just want to let you know, sometimes it's just a bad decision that they made. Some of them didn't, they didn't think that they were going to be outdoors. They didn't think that they were going to be in their car sleeping with their children. Come on. They didn't believe that they were going to lose their jobs. Come on. They had, yeah, they worked for corporate America. And corporate America dumped them out on their heads. They never, they never saw it coming. So listen, let us not be high-minded. 
Let us not be so self-righteous because it could very well be us outdoors with no clothes, no food. Come on here. But God didn't let these things be tonight. He let none of those things be. And so he's keeping us. Amen. So we need to be grateful. How many of you out there that are grateful tonight? I'm looking for a people that says, I'm grateful for the things that he has done. Come on here. I'm grateful for the victories that we have won. I'm telling you, some of you are not grateful enough. Glory to God. You better be grateful, though, because there's someone else who's worse off than you tonight. There's someone else who'd love to be in your shoes. So you need to be grateful. My God, good God from Zion. Hallelujah. I wish I had a praying church that said tonight I'm grateful. I listen here. I may not have uh, listen, I may not have all the, the, the big the wall to wall carpet. I may not have a, 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 a the a, the wall to wall closet space, but the little that I have, Father, I'm thankful for it. Father, I thank you that I do have one jacket that I can put on. Father, I thank you that I got a hat that I can put on my head. You know, we got to be thankful for the little. The Bible says when you're thankful for the little things, hallelujah, and if you take care of that, he'll make you ruler over many. Come on. So we bless your name tonight, Lord, and we give you praise. So tonight we're going to uh, come from a very familiar scripture. A familiar, familiar book. If you have your Bibles, go with me to Habakkuk. Go with me to Habakkuk. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm going to be reading uh, two uh, versions, the King James and the New Living Translation. Amen. I'm going to take my time, but I'm not going to take my time <laughs> Amen. We're trying to warm up. Amen. Glory to God. So here we go. Habakkuk, the second chapter. Uh, We're finding out that this is the prophet Habakkuk. And the prophet Habakkuk is, amen, um, sharing with us uh, uh, his story. Amen. And uh, so we are here now in verse one chapter two and it reads i will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what i shall answer when i am approved and when i am reproved this is a becca talking amen he was a what a watchman on the wall he says i will climb up to my watch tower yeah because he's a watchman and stand at my guard post. How many of y'all are standing at your guard post tonight? God have given some of you positions, and you're doing everybody else's job but your own. Come on here, somebody. Oh, yes, I said what I said. God done gave you a position, and you minding everybody else's business but your own business, but your own post. You at everybody else's post trying to take over, trying to tell people what to do. God assigns you to a certain area. You need to be in that area managing that. So you can't be, you can't be, uh, uh, God can't make you ruler over something that you ain't minding. Come on here. Something that you're not paying attention to, you're not giving place to. He can't make you rule over that because you minding other folks stuff. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he says, I, there I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. The Bible began to say, and the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon table that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up. Is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, mm-hmm. who enlarges his desires as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathered unto him all nations and heap unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, taunting proverb against him? And say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. 
How long? And to him that layeth himself with thick clay, laddle himself with thick clay, shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them? Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land of the city and of the of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that covet covetous and evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of God. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and hast sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Hallelujah. I'm stopping right there. Glory to God. But we want to go back tonight and talk about Prophet Habakkuk as he was on guard. The Father says tonight that there's going to be some instructions that he's going to give you. He's just, I just read them. He says, but you must, you got to do them line upon line, precept upon precept. There's some of you, God have called you to do such and such, and you too busy. You can't do what you call to do because you want somebody else's work. Let me tell you something. Use the hand that God has given you. Use the hand that he's given you. You don't worry about your neighbor's hand because truth be told, your neighbor hand, you probably can't play that hand. Hallelujah, because it comes with a lot of heartache, a lot of turmoil, a lot of uh, uh, tragedy, but God um, gave you your own hand. God gives you what you, he knows that you can do. He never puts no more on you than what you can bear. If God puts you in a position, it's because he tried you in the fire. He tried you in the flood. Come on here, somebody. So he knows what you're made of. Glory to God, but here it is. The, uh, the Bible begins to declare that the watchman was watching at the tower. Come on. He wasn't going to move off of his post. Y'all better hear me tonight. Hallelujah. Until he got the answer that he needed. Come on, somebody. I know that you remember Jacob, how he wrestled with the Lord, and he said, listen, I ain't going to let you go till you bless me. But I'm going to tell you tonight, we ain't going to let God go till he changes. Come on here. Wrestle with him till he changes. Change us, oh God. Make us more like you tonight, oh God. God, we got to have more of your anointing, more of your fire. God, we need more of your spirit tonight, oh God. Lord God, we need more of your wisdom, your, more of your understanding. Oh God, saturate our hearts tonight. Oh God, remove everything that ain't like you and out of our hearts. Remove it, oh God, if you find anything that shouldn't be. Take it out, oh God, tonight. Father, we want to be right, we want to be saved, and we want to be whole. So search us tonight, oh God. I didn't come to be on before you long. Hallelujah. I just want you to know tonight you got to be a watchman on the wall. God is putting you over some things. God is putting you over some people. You're going to have to watch now. You're going to have to stand guard. You're going to have to pay attention. You're going to have to wait on the Lord to speak. You can't rush him. You can't hurry God. You just got to wait. You got to wait till he speaks because when he speaks, it's just like, Oh, my God, when he speaks, things happen. When God speaks, things change. When he speaks, the earth tremble. When he speaks, demons tremble. So you just got to wait on God tonight. Hallelujah. Then the Bible begins to say, then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tables so that a runner can carry the connect message to others. Listen, I want to tell you tonight, write the vision and make it plain. There's some of you that are busy to drop something. There's some of you, you got many opportunities that are locked up inside of you. There are books locked up inside of you. Many businesses locked up inside of you. There are nations locked up inside of you. Hallelujah. But you're going to have to write the vision now and make it plain. Why would God want you to make it plain? He's the Bible beginning to say so that if a carrier... Uh, because somebody else can, uh, so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. This vision is for future time. It describes the end and it also shall be fulfilled. It is seen slow in coming, 
Wait patiently for it. It will surely take place. It will not be delayed. But I'm going to give you my answer for it. Write the vision, making it plain. Because let me tell you something. Because you and I have so many things to do. We have so much to do. We have so much work on, on, on in our hands, on our hands. We got so much that we're doing in the in the kingdom. So therefore, when we write the vision. We may can't carry out everything that we've written already. God says that some of us, sometimes we got to go back to the vision. Some of us, we got to amend the vision. Some of us got to put in some new clauses. Come on here. Some of us got to take out some stuff because we've already accomplished that. We've already mastered that. We've already did that. We already saw it come to fruition. So we got to go and amend the vision. We got to make it plain because guess what, people? We may not be the ones carrying it out. It could be our children, our children, children. That's why you got to write, write it and you got to make it plain. It shouldn't be no gibberish. It shouldn't be no goulash. It should be in language that nobody knows but you. You need to make it plain in simplicity. Don't you start writing them both humongous words that you can't even pronounce and don't know the meaning. Write it plain. Make it plain. Let it be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Not a, 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 a whatever Greek and Hebrew and, 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 and Arabic. And, come on. You got to make it plain. Hallelujah. So that those that come behind you can continue to carry out the vision. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. Then the Bible begins to say, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. How many of you know it's just for an appointed time? But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, you know tarry means to wait. Wait on it because it's surely coming to pass. It will not be delayed. Y'all know sometimes you say, Lord, you gave me this vision 20 years ago, and I ain't do, I'm not doing anything with it now. It's slow moving. It's slow coming. Lord, are you sure you want me to stick with it? Yes. Yeah. Because listen, sometimes God has to process some things out of it. He has to process some things in you because you don't even have the whole package yet. And so, therefore, it has to wait till it is perfected. It has to wait till it's the appointed time. Glory to God. The Bible begins to say, you know, it's going to speak, y'all. We rush, we be on a rush thing. We be want to rush it so we want things to happen when we say, but listen. God is telling us to write the vision tonight. There are some of you who have gotten business plans who are not doing anything with them. You don't set the business plans on the shelf. You got books in, on the inside of you. You set the books on the shelf. You got businesses on the inside of you. You set the businesses on the shelf. You ain't started up anything. You have not researched anything. You just got them up there. You got some of the names of the businesses. You got some of the names, some things that you want to do in them in the businesses, but you have not put your your best foot forward. I came to unlock you tonight. I came to get you on the right and the narrow path, to get you set up, hallelujah, to get you crunk, come on here, to crank you in the Holy Ghost. I came tonight to set you a fire, to set you a blaze, that he that shall come, he will come, and he's not going to tear it. Pick that book up off that, uh, that uh, pick up your journals off of the off of the shelf. Pick up those businesses off of the shelf. Go over that business plan. Look over the business plan. Search out what it's going to take to and to open it up. What kind of money that you're going to need. What kind of equipment that you're going to need. Come on here. Begin to research what God has given your sins to do. Nothing comes to a dream or uh, to a sleeper but a dream. But if you can get up and make that dream a reality, you working with something, but if you only just sleep and sleep and sleep, and you just dreaming and you're not writing it down, how are you gonna remember all your dreams? Cause you can't. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He will kill. He will steal your dreams. He will steal your business plans. He will steal the things that God has been putting in your heart. He will take it right up out of there if you're not careful. So tonight, we just want to thank God, hallelujah, that we are writing the vision. There are some of you, you have perfect vision. You see very clearly in the spirit, in the natural. 
but you're not producing what you see. You see it, but you don't say it. You don't you don't you don't speak it out of your mouth. Don't you know that you'll have whatever you say? Don't you know that if you see it and you begin to say it, you'll have it? Come on here, you confess it if you confess it enough, you'll begin to have just what you say. The Bible says, listen, call those things that be not as what? as though they already are. So I want to challenge you tonight to begin to pick up your passion again, to begin to begin to write, hallelujah, begin to go ahead and write your forward. Go ahead and write uh, write some pages in your new book. Go ahead and start it. See, if you, won't, if you don't ever start, you'll never get to it. You've got to make the first step in starting. You know, some people say, well, I started, then I stopped. No, you ain't started enough because when you first start, and you got a passion and you eager about it, you're going to do it. You're going to probably get through half of it. It would take you 10, 10 days to write your book if you just was consistent. If you got to be consistent and persistent. Consistency is key. That's something that you continue to do over and over and over. Amen. And if you listen, if you write for 30 days, now you're an avid writer. Come on. If you read 30 days straight, you're an avid reader. You become a reader. Come on. So consistent and persistent about your dreams, about your aspirations, about your goals, about your desires, about what you want to happen in life, about what you want to make happen for others, about what you want to make happen for your family. You don't want to see your family book broke, busted, and disgusted. So that means you're going to try to do something to get your family out of poverty. You're going to get them out of all of all. Come on here. You're going to get them out of that mentality, broke man mentality state. You're going to get them out of that crab in the bucket. Hallelujah scenario. Come on. You want to make sure that your family don't have to want for anything. And then they have enough to share. Come on. That they have enough to give to those less fortunate. Always when you're doing things, always get for more getting more than what you need. Because you never know who you may have to bless. See, y'all gotta stop being selfish. I'm just gonna get enough for me and my family. We're gonna eat this and we're gonna die. Or I'm just gonna get enough for me and my family. We're gonna drink this and that's gonna be it. Honey, you got the wrong oh, you got the wrong idea. You gotta get enough for others. And see when you do that, God will bless you with more than what than what the whole household could hold. Get it up because you never know somebody next door to you may not have a case of water. And I'm telling you, they're over there thirsty, and their water may not even be on. But you're so caught up worried about yourself. Hallelujah. You're so worried about yourself and what you need. You're not even thinking about others. I know this. This one thing I know, what you make happen for somebody else, God will make happen for you. What you do for somebody else, God allows somebody else to be thinking about you. When you're praying for people all over the world, somebody all over the world is praying for you. Hallelujah. Whatever you sow, you shall reap glory to God. Hallelujah. So why not start sowing good seeds every day, all day? Every day, all day, not just some days, but every day when you wake up in the morning, make out your affirmation, speak to yourself, declare and decree, declare what you should have and what you want, declare what you want to see, declare the victory, declare your victory, declare your outcome and income, come on here, declare what, oh my God, that you're blessed going out and coming in, declare things. And so shall it be established. And we bless the Lord tonight because we got to write the vision. We got to make that vision plain. I know some of you saying, I, I dreamt that I would be the heavyweight champion of the world. My God, my God, that is possible. Yeah, it's possible. Some people say, well, it ain't too possible because I don't fight. Well, maybe you don't fight. But, you know, you never know. Something might happen that cause you to fight and you may have whooped, whipped. Somebody that probably was the champion of the world. So listen here. Your goals. Come on. Let's make practical goals in life. Stop putting your goals out there so far fetched, and you know you can't. You probably won't reach them. When you make practical goals, uh, more likely you'll reach those practical goals because you're doing things that you're saying, okay, if I, if I had $20, well, I can spend five for lunch put five in my gas tank, and then I'll have 10 left. Okay, that's practical. Then I have some for tomorrow. But what if somebody needed it? You'll have it, right, because you only spent $10. We got to think about others. You know, uh, God said he, he, he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. That's a promise. Now, he said, um, you know, all of our needs. Now, our wants are something else. He said he'll get, you know, we talked about giving us our heart's desires, amen. 
when we delight ourselves in him. When you delight yourself in him, he'll give you, your, you know, the desires of your heart. But now the thing about it is when you're relinquishing your will to God, God, uh, you're, you've given yourself to him. So you're saying, God, I trust you that you're going to do what's best for me. You see, because my, my eyesight sometimes get in the way, and I can get crazy. And my eyesight, look, listen, I, uh, I may not understand what you're doing, so, but I trust you, God. I know that you know more than me. I trust your ways. I tried you, and I know you. I found you to be a friend. I know who you are. And so, you know, just give yourself to him, because sometimes you can't trust your own judgment. Amen. Your judgment will lead you straight to hell. Yes, it will. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we're looking at things from a carnal point of uh, a carnal state of mind rather than a, a spiritual state of mind. Amen. And re- you got to remember that people that are carnal minded, carnality can never understand the things of the spirit. Amen. So you know, spiritual minded people, you you shouldn't be trying to uh, explain yourself to carnal minded people. They're gonna challenge you every time. You wasting time. They're carnal minded, so they don't understand what you're saying. Amen. Hallelujah. But we bless the Lord tonight for His favor that He's given us. He's yet allowing us to write uh, our visions. Amen. Implementing them, executing the plan. It's one thing to have a vision. You need to be a visionary. But it's one thing when you don't implement what God then gave you. You got to implement your vision. You got to execute the plan. Come on here. It's a day that it comes where you won't have to execute, execute all that you have written. Amen. Hallelujah. We just bless the Lord tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just give God praise for each and every one of you uh, because God is, is, is truly, he's really, he's truly good. I'm telling you, he's truly good. I wouldn't serve a God like that. I wouldn't. If he, I'm telling you, he's so faithful in all of his ways. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So at this time, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up the phone lines early tonight whereby I can have a chance to pray for you if you're on the, the air. Amen. Because I, I'm hearing the rain again. Uh, you know, and I, you know, we were getting our, our as far as our television services, it was, um, you know, going out, um, going out. I've been having service. My Wi-Fi's been down all day, even, you know, with my phone's been acting up. So while I'm still on, I want to do get a chance to pray for somebody, anybody out there tonight. And so we're going to just go ahead and open up the phone lines. I bless the Lord for you all. I appreciate you, Dr. Kim and Kim. You just don't know how much I appreciate God for you. I'm rooting for you, woman of God. I'm rooting for you. And I believe that I shall see you. Hallelujah. Have some of the things that you have asked God for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm excited about what God is doing in the life of his people. And I just thank God. So is there anybody out there tonight that are on tonight listening to us? If so, we're going to open up the phone lines. Amen. Real quickly. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. God, call you on the air. Uh, good evening, Apostle Hannah. This is uh, Minister Emma from Mississippi. How are you doing tonight? Doing good. How are you? I know you cold over there. Yes, ma'am, I am. It's, it's cold over here. It's going to get back down to like 13 tonight or something like that. Yes, ma'am, it's cold. It's very cold. Um, but I was glad, to, glad you came on the line tonight. Your internet came back up so you can come on the line. And and bring that word about Habakkuk and write our vision down, make it plainly. So I was glad for that tonight, and I just thank you for that. I thank you that the Lord continue to use you to always bring us something with us on the prayer line, the radio, or uh, doing service on Sunday. So I thank God for you. I thank God for your family. Yeah. And, thank um, God for you. The prayer is not for me. The prayer is for others. Because I just, I seen where this homeless man in Baton Rouge uh, died on a bad mattress. He froze to death because he was like on a, in a um, a space. I want to say like, I don't know where it's underground, you know where like the, the subways go and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. he was laying on a bad mattress and when they found him, he had froze to death. So I'm just asking that. 
maybe the patrol officer or somebody would take a little extra time to kind of, you know, shine their light and light do see is is in a homeless people laying on bad mattresses laying on the ground, you know, because I I hate that soul was froze to death. So I'm just asking prayer for everybody else, you know, in this in this time of this freezing cold weather. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight, oh God, for this vessel, oh God, we just ask tonight, oh God, our prayer request is for someone else. Father, we ask you tonight that as, uh, that you would allow your uh, officers, oh God, to go around the towns, oh God, in the areas where they know homeless people to be, Father, and and pick them up, oh God, try to take them to some of the agencies that have uh, openings, oh God, and if they don't have openings, try to find a church that has an opening that are letting people come in. Father, I know that this is COVID. It doesn't have to do with COVID, God, because God, I believe that you will keep us COVID free. Father, I thank you tonight, right now, God, that you would have mercy on those that are still, that are not in a home, oh God, that are, are just still roaming the streets, oh God, and I ask tonight that you make haste, oh God, for them. Father, please, oh God, have mercy tonight on their souls, God. Lord, don't, don't let them die like that, oh God. Hallelujah, Father. Lord God, let somebody go and see about them. Let not even just the patrol officers, Lord God, but let neighbors in the community go and see about those people that they can help. You know, Lord, Father, we thank you tonight, oh God. Are, are we our sisters and brothers keepers? Yes, we are. Father, give us compassion enough to go out and check on them ourselves, oh God. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you tonight. Father, we thank you tonight, oh God. We thank you, Father, that every agency in every state, oh God, will open up, double check, make sure. Oh, God, that they will send some people out to make sure that nobody is out, no child, no adult, no senior, oh, God, no male or female are out, oh, God. And we thank you tonight, God. We give you praise. Lord God, let them find shelter, home, uh, a, a warm place, God, food, oh, God. Oh, God, clean clothing, warm clothing in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we thank you tonight. Let them even not, let the agencies not even charge them tonight. Oh, God, and we thank you, Father. We believe you, oh, God, that this, we, we're going we're gonna to have a seat in, in homelessness, God. We speak tonight, oh, God, that there will be more agencies that will open up their doors. Oh. Hallelujah. No more closing of the doors, but they will be opening them up all around so that we can um, have places for our people to go. Lord, we just thank you tonight and we give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. You know, it, it just makes you sad. It makes you want to cry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that uh, people are, are not, you know, being helped. Right. And here we are. We go all overseas. We pay yeah. all all that money to help people in every other yeah. country, every continent, yeah. helping yeah. them. And you won't even help right here in America. What kind Amen. of people are you? You know that that's Amen. what bothers me. You you may yeah. once it's like once you reach a, a status quo, you forget mm-hmm. about the poor. The Bible said the poor be with us always, and you want to go yeah. all you everywhere. You sowing a hundred thousand dollars here, but get yeah. them this person water service. Uh, you sowing mm-hmm. another two million dollars here for food coming through from the plains mm-hmm. being dropped. Yeah. yeah, but what about home? The Bible says right. charity begins yeah. at home and then spread yeah. abroad. Yes. So, yes. Father, let us check our neighbors. Let us check on our neighbors, Lord God. And we thank you tonight. Yes. I bless the Lord for you, woman of God. Keep praying. Keep lifting the people of God up. Mm-hmm. Lift them up. Amen. Yes, Lord. Keep Amen. Lifting them up. Keep yes. down in the Amen. alarm. Yeah. Amen. God bless yes. you tonight. We love you. God bless you too. Love you more. I'm like, hallelujah. Good evening, caller. You're on the air. Good evening, caller. You're on the air. Amen. We just bless the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. For those who might have tried to get on or wanted to be on and just some one for any reason could not be on. We're praying for people all over the world. Amen. With this rigid weather and that God will keep us safe. Keep us from our hurt, harm, danger, accidents, freak accidents, calamity will not come to our dwelling. 
We just thank you tonight, God. We thank you tonight. Is there anybody else that's on the line that's waiting to get on? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we thank you now. Thank you, Father. You're such a good, good daddy. We praise you. We honor you. We love you, God. You're so sweet. We just thank you for what you're doing, for what you're about to do, for what you've already done. And we just thank God tonight. And so my prayer is that we continue to pray one for the other. Amen. That we don't leave nobody out. Amen. And ask God to strengthen the people who are going out to check on people, you know, and we bind any um, crime, hideous crimes to them. Because sometimes, you know, you have good intentions to go out, and then it could be a reverse role where they try to attack you. So, Father, we, we ask tonight that that doesn't happen, oh, God. And, Lord God, help your people. And, women, it is wiser for you to go out and help during the day where, you know, people can see rather than you go out at night alone. I suggest that you let a man go out with you. Or, or the, you know, amen, and you be the watch and let the man go out, amen. We just thank the Lord for all that he's doing in these last and evil days. We thank God that we are in the end time, amen, and he's using us to do his will in the earth. So listen, you guys, I'm not trying to rush tonight, but I just bless the Lord for the timing. Thank you, Dr. Kim and Kim again, uh, um, and I just praise God. I've not been on the phone all day, Um uh, I use my daughter's computer. Well, I use my, yeah, I did use my laptop a couple of times, but I'm not taking a call today, and it looked as if a hundred calls came through my phone. But I bless the Lord for every one of you. Y'all just keep me lifted up in prayer over here in Mobile, Alabama. I thank God for every one of you, uh, you guys, and uh, we're going to continue to pray for you. So until next time, you guys, we love y'all. Peace out. God bless. Give me a heart 